All right, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, welcome everybody. Welcome back to the uh, sessions. Uh, so for the first session, it is guidance for ongoing studies disrupted by COVID-19. Uh, I want to first like introduce the uh, COVID-19, uh, uh, the latest enemy against humanity that we are all fighting. So on the right side of the slide, uh, you can see the uh, tiny blue uh, this is an image which I got of uh, CDC's website, open source. Uh, and then you can see the blue circles are actually the COVID-19 virus, uh, which is like uh, this image is actually taken from and isolated from the first US uh, case uh, for COVID-19. And inside the uh, circles, you can actually see some tiny spots, which are, uh, which is the actual virus genome. Uh, so I found it interesting, so I wanted to share with the group. Next for the content, so uh, we'll go over like, why is this user guide important? Uh, I have some introduction about it, and then we'll go through protocol deviations, disposition, missed visits, adverse events, exposure, uh, finally transfer to new sites, uh, a bit about trial summary, and then finally, some control terminology, which was re recently released for COVID-19. And then finally, the references. So the interim user guide, uh, the interim user guide was uh, released on the April 21st. So why is it uh, important? Is that uh, like initially uh, when, I mean, COVID-19 started affecting all phases of life, uh, including how we conduct clinical trials. Uh, like how, how do we act? Like, I mean, each sponsor has a different way to handle it, uh, but without this user, user guide, like each sponsor would be using different methods of handling the data and submitting the data to FDA. So uh, as soon as the FDA provided the guidance on how to uh, handle, like provide some guidelines in March 2020, which is an evaluating document and which is updated uh, every month. I see that it was last updated in July 2nd. So in response to that initial document guidance, which was released by FDA, CDESC has actually provided this interim user guide uh, in April 21, which was very fast. Uh, and in this document, they provided some details on how our sponsors, like different sponsors, can actually come together and then provide a unified, a unified approach of presenting data to FDA and other regulatory sources. So here we see uh, like a D DV, uh, deviations, uh, which are like tend to occur like within the uh, clinical trials and especially with the COVID-19. So in the deviations, uh, this is a standard like from the STTM IG 3.3, we can see the standard variables. And then here we can see some more standard variables. Uh, but an issue is that like with the guidance, they actually mentioned that we need to have uh, uh, changes in study visit schedules, missed visits or patient discontinuation to misinformation, especially for protocol specific procedures. So it will be important to capture specific information in the case report form that explains the basis of the missing data, including relationship to COVID-19 for missing protocol specific information, example, missed study visits or study dis discontinuation due to COVID-19. This information summarized in the CSR will be helpful to the sponsor and FDA. This is a guidance, this is a uh, phrase from the guidance, uh, which they mentioned that like it's better to have a C uh, CRF form, which actually help uh, captures all the missing information. Now, if we have a CRF like to capture the missing information, where will we capture that information like specific to the COVID-19? With the standard DV form, uh, with the standard DV domain, it is impossible to provide maybe we tend to create uh, another custom domain, but with this user guide, with the guidance given on that, they started, they proposed actually using a standard non-standard uh, non variables, NSVs. So we use it like in all the supplementary domains. They're part of uh, most of the supplementary domains. And uh, here we see the, the relationship in the first part and then the data of the NSVs. And below, uh, 
is the list from the appendix, from the interim guide, which actually lists all the NSVs, uh, a list of all the NSVs. Now, coming back to the introduction. So the uh, user guide was released, like it's based on the IG 3.3, uh, and it is released on the uh, April 21st. But it is important to note that, like, uh, even though the guidance, uh, the FDA guidance mentioned to actually update the CRFs, it is not often possible to include uh, or update uh, the CRFs at this point. Uh, maybe for the new trials, but like some of them, it might be tough. So it is not possible to update all the CRFs. So uh, they suggest they propose actually using keywords such as COVID-19 in the existing text fields. Uh, which is uh, uh, which would actually make it easier for FDA or any regulatory agency to actually search this. So using the keyword COVID-19, and then they also suggest like capture the data related to COVID in standard STM variables or non-standard variables NSVs, uh, and also in some of the custom domains. Uh, the guidance here is really helpful in actually uh, providing the custom domains rather than each sponsor adapting their own custom domain. They provided some really good custom domains uh, which are well thought out uh, that will help us to actually uh, provide in a unified approach to the regulatory agencies. Uh, and then finally, we have to use the indicator NSVs to link the above data. So either the standard, uh, whatever the data is captured in the form of standard STM variables or the NSVs or in the custom domains, we need to use the uh, indicator NSVs to link the above data. Now, coming back to uh, first protocol deviations, which are common. So, like as we embrace uh, uh, the clinical trials in the realm of uh, COVID 19, three things are like supposed to happen. One thing is all the trials are, like most of the trials are affected by COVID 19. There'll be some protocol deviations which are specific to COVID 19. Uh, so how do we handle these uh, protocol deviations? So uh, we can handle uh, these protocol deviations with the help of two variables which are added, like the DV and SVs. One is the reason for deviation. The other one is the indicator. So as you can see in this example, the deviation, we can add uh, specific information. Like there are two interesting examples. One is the flooded basement, which is not related to COVID-19. And another is all transport in the country is down due to COVID-19, which is related. So the indicator will actually specify which uh, reason, uh, which reason or which particular deviation is associated with COVID-19, and uh, that way it is uh, easier for the regulatory agency to like boil down to the cases which are of importance, like related to COVID-19. Now coming to Disposition. So in disposition, we have uh, uh, DS term, DS decode, and DS cat. So DS cat is kind of limited options. We have like the standard ones like disposition event, uh, but like DS decode, uh, which uses the uh, NCOMPT terms, the completion, non completion terms, uh, the code list, what we have. Uh, which are kind of like, uh, they're like currently in the latest uh, uh, control terminology uh, guidance, which I saw there are 30 terms, uh, but they actually boil down to these terms. The guidance proposes to use these terms uh, for COVID-19, uh, although like it is extensible, so you can uh, extend it if you find, if you, if you need like additional terms, but uh, these terms should suffice like most of the cases uh, for uh, uh, the disposition. And then uh, we have a uh, term, the DSEPRELI, uh, which kind of like the epidemiology pandemic related indicator, which we can use to show that uh, whether the disposition is related to the pandemic or not. Now, miss visits uh, usually happen even without pandemic or like and with pandemic. Uh, uh, that tend to happen more. So how do we handle the missed visits? So for the missed visits, like VE domain was proposed, like the custom domain VE. Uh, 
because like SV, we cannot, we only capture the visits which happen. Uh, uh, but what about the visits which were supposed to happen? And especially, uh, say we want to do an analysis, like uh, and even the regulatory document, which what which I mentioned is that we need to provide an analysis of uh, what is the impact on the primary endpoint or the safety because of COVID-19, uh, where like missed missed visits tend to happen. We need to clarify that information. Now, like in SV, we cannot capture like which are the missed visits. But with VE, we can actually capture that information saying, uh, which is the missed visit, like uh, how did it actually happen? Uh, in this example, we can see one interesting uh, example and which I like, even without COVID-19, uh, I think it will be interesting to use as a regular, is repeat visit for abnormal lab, the third one, where it says a lab was repeated for an abnormal lab, which tend to happen in some of the trials where we try to reconfirm. And with this domain in here, we can actually capture that information, even though it is not related to COVID-19. And with specific to COVID-19, uh, what I like with this particular domain is that as we capture the missed visits, uh, the variable VEREA associated the reason for occurrence value, where we can give the reason of why that particular missed visit has not happened. If you look at the columns five, six, and seven, uh, we do not have the STDTC, but we do have the DTC. We do have the DTC variable, but we do not populate values for the STDTC because these visits have not happened. And then VEDY is populated. And the occur says it is N, uh, which is basically saying that these visits have not happened, but we can see that uh, a day is populated. Uh, I believe this will be really uh, valuable uh, at analysis level, when uh, at the atom level, when we want to do some imputation or do some analysis on what are the missed visits. Uh, what is the gap between the missed visits? Uh, are there like more than one consecutive missed visit. All these uh, analysis questions can be answered uh, by capturing the information about the missed visits, uh, saying that when it, it's supposed to happen, the VE, DY, and the DTC variables will be really invaluable in this particular uh, approach. Uh, now, we, uh, for the missed visits, we can all like we also need to like relate and uh, create a relationship between VE and DV. So which we can do with uh, the the deviation reason and then whether it is related or not. So that uh, the indicator variable will help us to actually link these two together. And then coming to the like uh, along with the missed visits, like one common thing, like uh, apart from these, like is uh, it's tend to happen is the uh, the labs. Uh, the finding domains, like most of the finding domains, they might be missed, like the labs are not done or some particular assessments are not done. In that case, we can fall back to the uh, the standard not done. Uh, we do have like in the EDC a form which says that like whether performed or not, and then that can actually help us. Uh, so we can uh, adapt the, the stat not done uh, as required. Uh, they say like we use it, adapt it like as required for the different finding domains. Uh, uh, to to say that a particular visit is not done. Uh, rather than this actually avoids the uh, need to have an additional CRR for some other source to actually say whether a particular test is done or not done, we can just reutilize the CRR uh, which says uh, it is not done in any way. And then coming down to the adverse events, so uh, version 23 of the MEDRA has been released uh, for the uh, adverse events uh, in response to the COVID-19. They added actually uh, some uh, terms which are really specific to COVID-19. They updated certain terms. So as you can see, they added like three terms, like they added actually more terms, but like three vital terms here. As we can see that initially it was just called as a coronavirus infection which is now updated to preferred term saying COVID-19, which is more specific. And then uh, earlier they had like just say test positive, but now it is more associated to the virus name. Uh, this is cov 2 uh, test positive, and then exposed to communicable disease. Now it is like specific to COVID. Uh, so the terms have been polished to make it more specific to COVID-19. And 
And then here are like some of the uh, supplemental uh, update reports uh, for uh, Madura. Like we can see like uh, what is a term. Uh, we can see that uh, these are the proposed terms and which are applicable. So they changed the uh, earlier LLD of like N, uh, the COVID acute respiratory disease to COVID-19, which is more specific. And then they added like these are the additional other terms which are related to positive, whether the particular test is positive or not. Do note that like uh, as per the regulatory guidance uh, and the general talk in the field is that we need to actually specify like any test which is done for COVID-19, whether it is positive or negative should be included as an adverse event. Uh, so where we use this particular, uh, the lower level terms or preferred terms to actually uh, specify the information that whether a test is positive or negative. Also specify even there is an option to specify whether it is an asymptomatic uh, COVID-19 as well, uh, or false positives or false negatives. Uh, there's a consolidated list of uh, Excel, which actually has all the updated terms for Metra uh, 23, which lists a lot of different possibilities there. Uh, and do note that like uh, when uh, also like some of the adverse events which uh, which might be related to COVID-19, uh, it is important uh, to actually associate those symptoms to COVID-19. Uh, so the sponsor should be really careful on how to associate and provide rationale. So collect as much as information as possible about the adverse events to say whether that particular adverse event is related to COVID-19 or not, uh, or whether it is like disease specific. Now, uh, seeing the impact of COVID-19 before and after. So with these terms, like this is how uh, it looks. Uh, before, we can see just a specific uh, generic uh, coronavirus infection, but now uh, we say COVID-19. Uh, so in case, uh, in case, I mean, because there are like a lot of trials which are ongoing, it will be tough to uh, adapt uh, 23, the version 23 uh, in all the trials, like if uh, the sponsor is not willing to or like uh, is not able to update, then it is better to actually uh, use the term COVID-19 in the field, in the generic field, a term, and also use the indicator saying that it is related to COVID-19, the indicator NSV on the far right to say that it is related to COVID-19. Now coming to exposure. So uh, as we've seen, like in the exposure, like along with the missed visits, uh, we might have some missed doses as well. Uh, it is possible to have some missed doses. So in here, we actually have like a couple of variables uh, which can be used to show whether a particular patient dosing was interrupted or whether the patient dose, uh, like whether the patient completely missed the dose, and if that particular missed dose is related to COVID-19 with the help of these uh, additional NSV variables. The first one is reason for interruption. So an example is uh, here we see a study treatment uh, supply interrupted, uh, disrupted. Uh, and we have uh, whether it is related to the, uh, uh, and other uh, variables, whether it is adjusted or uh, related interruption reason uh, or pandemic related discontinuity. The last row, what we see is that actually the patient completely disrupt pandemic. Uh, so we can actually provide that information in here. So it is important to use the NSVs as much as possible and also have more specific information rather than having some, some generic information like, uh, for example, uh, they open uh, the document with an example saying, uh, don't just say it is just disrupted due to pandemic, but actually provide more specific information on why exactly due to pandemic, pandemic is it disrupted? Is it supply chain issue uh, or there's a safety issue related to the patient? Uh, so to collect as much as information as possible about the event. Now, uh, finally, like with the uh, transfer to other sites, like it is tend to happen. Uh, I mean, as we see even with our sponsor, like uh, as a sponsor, we see uh, in our company as well as in other companies, it is possible that uh, some sites are affected by COVID-19. Uh, there are some evaluation guidelines where the sites tend to close or uh, they don't want, to, they don't have enough uh, adequate facilities to handle it. Uh, in these scenarios, it is, uh, it is, I mean, it will happen that like they have to, the patient has to get transferred to other sites. 
So transfer to site information, uh, the proposed custom domain is the site transfer, the ST domain, where we can actually capture all the information related to the transfer. Uh, and in here, we are actually only capturing the information of the citation transfer to, but not the original site from where the patient originated. Uh, so for this linking between like to capture both the information is where we need to have the DM domain where we add the site information like the site ID will include the original site where the patient was enrolled uh, and the site one, uh, the site ID one, or like we can add site ID two if the patient is subsequently transferred to another site, uh, different sites in here. So this will help us to link uh, between these two. And then it is also important uh, we, we also use the TS, the disposition, uh, to provide the information that the patient actually transferred, uh, and then have the indicator variable saying that the pay, uh, it is linked to the pandemic. So these three domains uh, can can work in like uh, uh, together to actually provide us the comprehensive information on uh, when did the patient discontinue uh, or like a transfer to a different site and which particular site was he originally from. So we have all the information together, which we can lay, provide as a listing uh, or a table, like uh, if necessary, like to the uh, FDA. And then finally, the trial summary. Uh, in the trial summary, they added like two terms which uh, to summarize the uh, how the uh, uh, COVID-19 is impacted. So whether the, if the trial is impacted by COVID-19, it is important to add these terms and say that uh, it is actually impacted by COVID-19. Uh, and also do uh, update the SDRG to say that you're actually using the COVID uh, interim user guide. Uh, do remember to do that. And the recent control terminologies were released in response to COVID-19. Uh, as we can see here, there are certain procedures added, uh, test codes added, uh, some TS param, uh, which we just went through, the TS parameters, and there are certain uh, race-related information. And then uh, we have some COVID-19 specific findings, test names. Uh, there are eight additions to the series glossary. So uh, do browse through these control terminologies. And finally, coming back to the references. Uh, so as uh, uh, Chris actually pointed out that uh, there are two uh, interesting blogs about, from Fuse, uh, actually uh, navigating through the adverse events as well as the efficacy. So I found them really uh, valuable in, in understanding going through the guidelines. So I definitely recommend that. And um, most of the people are familiar with the March 20th, uh, March 1, uh, the guidance released by FDA in Ma March 20. But there's another guidance which is released by uh, FDA, uh, which is the statistical considerations for clinical trials during COVID-19 uh, in, Ju in, Ju in uh, June 2020. Uh, and also do go through these. And there are certain, the final two links are of the matter training uh, documents which you can browse through and understand like what are the changes which are done to Metra in the 23 version. With that, uh, I conclude my presentation and then uh, leave it open for questions. Thank you, everybody. Thank you at Fuse and uh, the SAPTA uh, Biometrics Management for this opportunity. Thank you very much. Very well done, Bhargav. It was a very interesting presentation. And another one that's very relevant for our, our industry today. Uh, all of us are dealing with the impact of COVID um, in our studies and our single-day events. So. Yeah. All right. So it looks like we're starting to get some questions in. Uh, do you re recommend mapping uh, S? NSVs in SDTM or Atom? In SDTM. I definitely recommend them in SDTM. Okay. Uh, how do you map uh, VEDTC if you don't collect planned visit date? 
Yeah, that's true. I mean, this requires an update to the CRF where uh, you need to have a uh, value saying that one approach is to actually update the CRF to say when the supposed visit is supposed to happen uh, or to actually get it from, uh, say, if you're collecting the deviations in the form of an Excel, if your company uses that approach, uh, then to actually add in the information in there, uh, protocol deviation, a missed visit, uh, and then when that visit is supposed to happen to get some information from that Excel as a source. Okay. That's the only questions that have come through so far. Uh, anybody else? Okay, hold on. What are some examples of protocol deviations for oncology by COVID-19? Any opinion? Uh, yeah, I mean, that was in my previous life. I used to work in oncology. Uh, let me think. Mm, I mean, definitely there will be some uh, uh, scan, miss scans, uh, CT scans or like the PET scans have been missed. Uh, uh, so how are we going to like navigate them? That will definitely protocol deviation. Uh, and usually for the sensitivity analysis, they have certain cases where they say uh, X number of missed scans. Uh, then you're supposed to take the previous value. So in these kind of scenarios, we definitely have some protocol deviations, and it'll be tough to navigate that. Okay, excellent. The questions are coming in fast and furious now. How is the linking done between DV and other domains? Yeah, see uh, the linker variable, which is why or uh, you can use the subject ID along with the uh, the linker variable, which says whether it is affected by pandemic or not. And you can look for the specific uh, linker variables along with that. Okay. How does remote monitoring play a role in this situation? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, remote monitoring. We can we can use the VE domain actually, in where we can actually say if uh, the visit has actually happened uh, remotely, then you can add in the information saying that it is a remote visit. There's an option to say that in the example in the slide uh, where we can see that. Uh, let me just show you quickly. Sorry, the slide is going, but I mean you can refer to the slide where uh, in the VE domain where it actually says that uh, you can. And that information. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what is the impact to the medical device industry? Do you know? Sorry. What is the impact on? What is the impact of COVID on medical device industry? Sorry, I didn't get that question. The question, what is the impact of COVID-19 on the medical device industry? Do you, do you have any feedback on that or any? any... No, uh, yeah, um, I haven't, okay. I, I don't have experience on the medical device. Did you come across or have any suggestions for patients who change sites but have come back to, re but have come back to return back to the original site once available? Yeah, and we can actually use the same approach. That is, the patient changed from site A to site B, and then again site B to site A, and then add the information on, uh, uh, say, the patient actually found it safe to come back to site A, but do mention that information as two different records. Okay, excellent. All right, well, that's